Hi, I'm Chelsea from Tech Diva Media. In this video, I'm going to cover 16 tips you can use to avoid having a nightmare project with a designer. And this can be used for designing whether it's your stationery or your branding or your logo for your business, or whether it's for your website or an app. Uh, there's certain things that you can avoid doing when you're working with a designer that can ensure that you have a really good result and don't end up spending a lot of time and money on something that just doesn't work out well for either one of you. Okay, follow along. Here's 16 mistakes to avoid when hiring a designer. The first would be lack of consistency. And what I mean by this is if you have uh, a designer that you're working with to get a logo done, say on 99designs.com, and then you have a person that's designed your website, and then you have another person that you find on Upwork or uh, Fiverr or uh, you know your, your niece or nephew that's designing a business card for you, for instance, if you don't have clear direction to give each of these designers, you're going to end up with like a mishmash of results and things are going to look sloppy because you don't have the same fonts, the same exact colors, the same theme, the same tone and personality. So you really want to work with the designer and get a, con a, a stream of consistency and develop a set of brand guidelines uh, to work with uh, your designers first before you hire them so that everything looks really, really tight. The next thing is overcomplicating your designs. And a common mistake of kind of amateur designers or younger designers is to add more to something to give it more life and to try to make it more effective or prettier or something. And that's actually um, something that can take away and degrade your design. And less is more in many cases with designs. So you want to dial it back and look at each element that's a part of your design and really question why it needs to be there. And if you can't come up with a great reason, then get rid of it because the overcomplication just dilutes the message and the power of your design in the end. The third mistake would be copying others. So I think it's awesome to go out and research and find other stuff that you like. That's fantastic. And that's how new things are created when you glean what you like best from, say, three or four different examples and then come up with something. But when you directly just copy something or give something that you like to a designer and say, hey, I love this. Can you just make a version of that for me? Um, and you don't have your own distinct look, um, it just looks awful. And if somebody ever found out, then it just makes you look really cheap and that's just not good. The fourth then would be going cheap. Um, it's very easy to decide that design is something that it's kind of an afterthought and something that you can either get your relative to do or you can do on your desktop publishing uh, software or something you can get off of a site like Fiverr.com, for instance. But that really sort of compromises the whole impact of your entire uh, project or could. For instance, your website or say a brochure. If you go cheap and you have something that's just a template or looks like it was done by someone that maybe isn't a professional designer, it's going to show and it'll impact the message and the overall tone of your stuff. So it will actually make your entire project look cheap, um, even if it, you think it looks pretty good, but it, there's few things here and there that aren't consistent, if there's some sloppiness, if you've worked with someone that didn't quite complete it and didn't really cross all the T's and dot all the I's, it's going to show and that's going to really impact the way your overall impression um, occurs for people. The fifth mistake would be focusing on price instead of designs. And this really goes with the fourth mistake of going cheap. Um, when you focus on price and evaluating the designer you work with based off of what they're going to charge you, Versed on, versus basing it off of how much you like the designer and you like what's in their portfolio. Um, that's if you, if you choose them based on what you like in their portfolio, then you know you're going to be working with someone that has a vision that you really align with, regardless of price. If you go by price alone, you might go with someone that seems like they have a good estimate for your project, but they really don't align with you as far as your values or your aesthetics. And you end up costing yourself more time and money in the long run because you either have to find somebody else or trash what they got or you spend forever trying to get them to really see what it is that you want to create and the tone and vision of your brand. The sixth mistake would be a badly written design brief. And this kind of ties back to having brand guidelines, but it's a little bit different. So a design brief is really the clarity on exactly what you would like to create um, where that thing, whatever it is that you're creating, is going to be seen. So for instance, if you're creating a business card, in what context are people going to see this business card? Are you going to be going and using it at events? Is it going to sit on your desktop when people walk into your office? Like where is this piece of design or this design element that you're creating? Where is it going to be seen? 
Um, when a designer knows that, that's going to help them know a lot about what's going to be around the design so they know how to design with that. Um, and also your specifications as far as are you going to be printing this? Um, are you going to be putting it on the web? Is it going to be a mobile app? Um, you know, who is going to be using this design or seeing this design? What's the audience going to be like? Are they um, an audience that's over the ages of 50 or 60? Is it an audience that's, uh, you know, is it teenagers that you're marketing to? What is this design? How is it going to be used? Who's it going to be seen by? All that needs to be covered in the design brief, as well as um, anything that you want to stay away from. So the designer's really clear from the beginning on what it is you're looking for. It also helps you to get really clear so you can find a designer to work with um, because you're so uh, ahead of the game by outlining everything first in a brief. The seventh mistake would be not taking responsibility for how the overall uh, or end product turns out. So the end result is ultimately the result of whatever you've put into it. And if you don't take responsibility for being clear in the design specifications, reaching someone and working with someone that has a portfolio of stuff that you like, um, hiring someone not based on price, but actually investing in someone that really gets it. If you don't take responsibility for the end product and you just kind of want to blame the designer for going wrong, um, that sucks because it's actually on your shoulders. It's your project. So you want to take responsibility that the final result, if it sucks, it's uh, something that needs to be cleaned up on your end, either by finding another designer or getting better at clarifying what it is that you want or you know, looking at the overall project in general and really seeing where it is that what you want isn't coming through um, to get the result that, that you end up with. The eighth mistake is not building in time for potential problems. This is probably one of the most common things that I think every project uh, any one of us can relate to is that a lot of times it just takes more time. So if you need something ASAP um, and you're sacrificing being able to invest time in your design, you have to just assume that you're probably going to get something that's compromised. It's like not that great, but it got done quickly, right? So you want to build in time for potential problems so that you can come up with something that really looks tight. It looks very polished. It looks very refined and it looks high quality. And when you build in that time, you get that quality aesthetic that you don't get when you try to rush through it. The ninth mistake is overestimating the cost savings. Um, a lot of times it can seem like you're going to save more if you just do it yourself or if you say have a relative do your design for you or you know you do get a template or something and you think you'll save on the costs but in the long run it often costs you even more because you have to redo it it doesn't look as good uh, if you're doing it it may take way longer than what you thought to figure out the photoshop tools and how to get the look that you really want like there's a lot that goes into it that you think you're going to save and you end up not and it ends up in ends up taking you more time and sometimes more money so Never underestimate the cost savings um, if you're trying to do a short, take a shortcut. The tenth would be getting in too deep too quickly, and this means getting in too close with your designer and just assuming if the first thing they send you looks awesome that they're going to be the one you work with like forever, and you give them then all the work that you have and really put all of your eggs in that one designer's basket. And that can make you very vulnerable if that designer gets overwhelmed, if they have other clients, if they have something come up in life and they're the one person that you've given everything to, now you're very dependent on them and that's not fair to you or to them. So the better thing to do is to focus on having your brand style guide and consistency in the, um, the you know, knowing the fonts that you use, the tone of things, so you can work with multiple designers and get a consistent result and you don't really rely and lean in on one designer and get too deep with them too fast. The next thing would be not getting involved enough. So this is the opposite. This is if you are working with someone and you kind of just say, ah, oh, you know, come up with something. I'm sure what you come up with will be great, or I'll know it when I see it. That's really hard to work with, and that means that often you'll get something that wasn't what you wanted at all, or wasn't anywhere near what you thought it would be, or you're ending up going back and forth 30 times more with the designer because you weren't involved enough at the beginning to give them really clear direction. The 12th mistake would be putting all your eggs in one basket, kind of like what I mentioned on the, the 10th mistake. You know, if you put everything into the hands of one designer, that's making you very vulnerable. Um, and again, the focus is to create on a brand style guide so that you can have multiple designers um, and also understanding that many designers have a specialty, uh, whether they're a print designer, or a book designer, or a book cover designer, for instance, or 
a web designer or an app designer, these are different specialties. And so often a designer can be really good in one um, and not as familiar with the others. So if you just assume that one designer is going to be able to design across all of those mediums, um, that actually puts a lot of pressure on a designer and they're usually not going to be great across all of them. So the key is for you to have consistency in what you want and clarity over your brand aesthetic so that you can work with the designer for each of those different mediums. The 13th mistake would be ignoring early frustrations. And this could look like communication issues, if you have a hard time contacting the designer, uh, if it seems like you're not really seeing eye to eye and it takes a lot of back and forth to get what you want, um, or if the designer, I don't know, if you just have some sort of complications when you are communicating, or if it just seems like it's not quite that smooth a relationship of a relationship, but yet you really like their designs. Um, if you continue working with them, that inevitably is probably gonna come up and bite you in the tail later. So the early frustrations, you want to work out those kinks quickly before you get too involved in a project or drop the relationship and move on to someone else. The 14th mistake would be missing the opportunity to negotiate on price. Um, while, of course, you don't want to go cheap, there's nothing wrong with negotiating. So if you get a designer and they give a price, come back with um, asking them you know, to compare it to things, asking them if they can maybe work with you a little bit if you give them consistent work over time. Uh, would they be willing to negotiate their rate down? Um, if you're gonna give them, say, another project right after this one, is there something, is some way they can work with you? Can they work with you on a payment plan? There's nothing wrong with negotiating um, after you've gotten your initial quote to be able to get a price that's a win-win for both of you. The 15th mistake is not getting feedback. On designs. So if you like what they're producing, um, but you haven't asked someone that's in your target audience, say you're designing a website and you like the website design, but you haven't really asked anyone that would be your target audience for your website what they think of it, then that's kind of going to shoot yourself in the foot or it could shoot you in the foot later um, because you want to know that the design you're coming up with really works for the audience you're aiming for, not necessarily you. So if you like it, um, that's one thing, but that's actually not the ultimate kind of most important thing. It's most important that your audience or your clients, or your customers like the design, that it works for them. So you want to get feedback from your target audience before you wrap up the project. And the 16th mistake is not looking at your design in the wild. And by that, I mean looking at your design where it's going to be living as the final product. So if it's a book cover, uh, going to the bookstore and printing out say a rough copy of the book cover and wrapping it on a, a book so you can see what the spine would look like, you can see what the cover would look like up against the other books in a, a bookstore, for instance, or if it's a website, um, looking at your website on mobile devices, on iPads, on uh, laptops and desktops with huge monitors, looking at your website compared to other websites of your competitors, really seeing how your design is going to occur when it's out there in the world and other people are experiencing it. That's really key before you wrap up a project because it can look great um, standing alone uh, in a presentation, but can look totally different when it's actually out in the real world and people are engaging with it. So thanks for watching. I hope these tips were helpful. If you like this video, please just hit thumbs up below. Uh, if you want to check out more about myself and the work that I do as a designer, you can find me at techdivamedia.com.